Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Down. as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my SC100 Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect Exam Study Series. Uh, we are ploughing through the content at the moment. Um, you know, we're doing some, um, hopefully you're enjoying it, hopefully you're getting something from it, but we've covered a lot of topics so far, like Zero Trust. Um, we've covered uh, the CAF, or Cloud Option Framework, you know, Well Architect Framework. We've covered... Um, sort of looking at the uh, Microsoft benchmark, Microsoft uh, security benchmark, um, as well as other sort of regulatory compliances. And we've looked at, you know, in the demos, um, or labs have looked at sort of Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Defender for Cloud as well. So um, without further ado, let's get started with this episode. So this is, as I said, the Microsoft Cybersecurity Architect uh, SE100 exam series. This part today is the last, last part within topic four. Um, so we're going to be finishing off this topic and this topic itself is called is around designing a resiliency strategy for common cyber threats like ransomware and specifically we'll talk about configurations for secure backup and restore and we'll talk about security updates as well and then we'll jump into the demo we'll actually look at um, we'll actually look at uh, Azure backup in, in that because I think it's quite relevant uh, for, for this topic uh, so let's talk about configurations for secure backup and restore so Azure Backup is is the sort of Microsoft Cloud native service that, that deals with backups and restoring from backups. Um, so this is the sort of overview of the architecture. So you can see that Azure Backup service uh, allows you to have recovery point management, resiliency and availability, storage management and data tiering. But you can also um, not just, uh, you know, obviously the, the backup within cloud is built in. But you can actually use agents to backup on premises as well. So when you're thinking about your backup strategy, um, you know, Azure Backup is not just a cloud native, but it can, it can stretch out to on-premises. So you can protect your virtual environments or your physical servers on-premises as well. So it's, you know, it's good to think about that when you're designing um, backup strategy. Um, again, it has policy management, multi-user auth. Uh, you, can, you can protect it with multi-factor authentication. You've got great monitoring and reporting. And all that has a central management within Azure. We'll look at that um, in the demo shortly. So, like I said, it is it is an Azure service, so it's a PaaS service um, that's that's kind of the back ends managed by Azure and Microsoft, but you obviously manage the, the backup policies. But it does have an Azure only backup scenario, obviously as a, as a hybrid. We'll look at both those scenarios now. So, from a from an Azure only backup scenario, you obviously got the backup service, which has a which you assign a vault, um, and that then links into your Azure virtual machine using a sort of VM agent, like a backup extension. And from that, you can back up your OS disk, you can back up temporary disks or data disks as well. And it takes a snapshot of those disks. Um, and then uh, that is transferred into your vault, which has some storage at the back end of it. Um, so again, all the sort of back end stuff, all that vault back end storage is managed by uh, Microsoft and that mechanism to do the backup. You just need to configure the policies and configure the, the sort of um, what do you want a snapshot. But it uses snapshots basically. Then have hybrid scenarios. So again, this is where we're trying to protect on-premises services. Um, and again, you use uh, VM agents and you deploy those, or you download those from Azure, you download, install those on your VMs or your servers. And that day, that's like a backup agent. And then that allows back, um, uh, Azure Backup to talk to your on-premises uh, resources. So um, those are files, you backup files and folders, and they're being sent into your sort of Azure uh, recovery services vault. And then you can use you know, depending on what your requirement is, you can use uh, local redundant storage or global redundant storage as well. Um, so both those types of storage types are, you know, redundancy types are supported for hybrid. Let's just talk about some of the key takeaways then from, from looking at your backup and backup and restore. So Microsoft Azure Recovery Services, Mars it's called. Um, you can use that, you can, which is again, allows you to, to, to use agents to, to back up your VMs. Um, you've got services like Azure Backup, which is a MABS a MAB service. Then you've got Data Protection Manager as well, which is a DPM service. And these are going to provide features like prevention, um, alerting, and recovery. And you can enable you know, multi-user authorization, MUA, on your recovery services vault as well to add them like an additional layer of protection. So it'll be critical operations um, of disabling those security features. Let's talk a little bit about security updates now. So this is patch management essentially of servers and, and whatnot. And, and we have Azure Update Manager, which is, is the service you can use within Microsoft Cloud, Azure specifically to update servers. And here we show an overview of the architecture. So we've got the sort of, um, we see there the, the numbering there, and so the green number one there, which is kind of um, looking at report status and, and sort of um, 
the the reviewing update assessment, defining deployment schedule, and and sort of reviewing update deployment status. That then sends information, obviously scripts and whatnot, to your sort of Azure automation account, and that's obviously linked to your log analytics agent at VM extension as well. But then we have um, so step one and two there. We have step three, which is to check for maintenance windows and deployment. Um, your, your, as your automation account is actually connected to your log analytics workspace as well. We then move into the sort of pre-steps, updates and post-steps. But from a pre-steps and updates perspective, that goes to a point four, which is applying updates. And then when we apply updates, those apply updates to your, your Windows update agent. And that can send updates to Linux remote repository, Microsoft update, um, you can get updates from Windows Server update services or local Linux services. So they all send updates to your sort of um, update location, sort of your central um, storage. And then you've got post steps. So when you come from, once you've done the applying the update, you come down to post steps. And that goes into sort of a hybrid runbook worker role, which is where your Azure virtual machine and your non Azure virtual machine can be, and you can integrate those with Azure management. Um, so that's some of the, the high level architecture when it comes to Azure Update Manager. And again, this is a really good service for updating servers specifically. Um, so it's just some key takeaways around Azure Update Manager. Um, you can use Update Manager to, to assess and, and apply security updates to all sort of connected um, you know, Windows servers and Linux servers. Uh, and you can sort of review automatic VM guest patching to automatically assess and update Azure VMs to maintain security compliance with sort of monthly critical and security updates. You can design a hybrid update management as well to a solution to, to kind of manage updates on both Microsoft Azure and on-premises Windows Linux computers. Some of the services you integrate with Azure Update Manager, so Log Analytics Workspace, this is the, the sort of data repository for, for log data collected from your, your resources um, that run in Azure on-premises or in other cloud providers as well, like AWS and GCP. You've got the automation hybrid worker um, solution as well. So this is uh, this is solution helps run Azure automation run books on, on Azure and non-Azure computers. Then you've got that hybrid run, run book worker so this is a computer configured with sort of hybrid runbook worker and it executes uh, runbooks directly on the computer and against the resources in your local environment. We then got that uh, hybrid runbook worker group. So this is a group of hybrid runbook workers used for sort of high availability HA. Got the runbook itself. So this is a collection of one or more uh, linked activities that automate a process operation. Then you've got obviously your on-premises computers and VMs, uh, so these can be via you know Windows or Linux OS, and finally you've got Azure VMs as well. So these are all the sort of integrations and, and services you'll be using that integrate with um, Azure Update. So it's time to jump into the demo portal now. So we're going to jump in and have a look at Azure, a bit of a close look at Azure Update Management, and as well as um, well, we'll look at Azure Backup Service in this demo. Then the next demo we'll try and look at Azure Update Management. Uh, so let's jump into the portal. Welcome back. Here we are in my sort of demo tenant and uh, want to take a look at backing up infrastructure within Azure. Now, um, Azure Backup is built into services, so it's not like um, you can have recovery services, which I'll look at as well shortly. But for example, if you want to back up a virtual machine, you go to that VM like I'm doing here. And there's a backup and disaster recovery. You click on backup. And this is where you can actually uh, select an existing backup. So if you've got anything, if you've backed up anything before, you can create a new backup. So you can create a backup vault, give it a name, make sure you choose a relevant resource group. And again, do you want an enhanced backup? And that's what backup type do you want basically? Do you want multiple backups per day, up to 30 days operational retention, retention, um, support for trusted launch as your VMs, do you want support for VMs with ultra disks and, and SSD v2, or do you want a standard once a day backup, you know, bare bones sort of thing. Once you've selected that, again, depending on what you select, you then choose a backup policy. So you can edit this policy. So if you edit the policy, we can basically choose the backup schedule, look at the date, the detention ranges, and do we want weekly backup points? Do we want essentially monthly backup points and yearly? So you can do that sort of child, father, grandfather sort of um, selection. And then, for, but then it gives us some details about the backup frequency, the instance restore, the retention of really backups. And finally, which disks do we want to back? We've got multiple disks, you can select them or deselect disks that you might not want to back up, and then you can click on enable backup. We also have uh, recovery vaults as well. Um, oh, this fell I would be dangerous. Uh, recovery services vaults. 
so again we've already got an existing one here if we look at this this is where our, our data is backed up to so remember this is the the sort of um location your data gets backed up to uh, and again we've got lots of different settings here we can do a backup we can enable site recovery we'll look at site recovery another time um, but we can enable backup here again what do we want to back up? We want to back up a virtual machine or a file share or a sql or a sap in an instance um, where is your workload running? Azure, is it Stack Hub, HCI, is it Stack Hub on premises? Then we click on uh, step to configure the actual backup. Again, this is similar to what we had before where we can, so this is essentially the backup policy. You can configure enhanced or standard, select the backup policy, um, and then select the virtual machine you want to backup. Uh, so to so do a quick overview of, of sort of Azure backup and the, the recovery of all charges that we can do on our virtual machines. Again, you can extend this to on premises and other clouds by installing agents. So, uh, hopefully, you found that useful. Thank you very much for continuing to support my channel. Make sure you subscribe if not, why not? Um, smash that subscribe button. Lots of useful links in the description. Got a link to the Measure Up uh, Practice Exam, Discounted Practice Exam. They are the official Microsoft partner. Also, a link to the Git repository where we've got some um, case studies you can do to help you prepare for the exam. But also, a link to Microsoft Learn modules for the SC100 exam as well. So hopefully all that will help you prepare as well for my content. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.